Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, on uh, Sunday afternoon. And I'm glad you all to be here with us today. So let's give about two more minutes for some of the participants to just join. So I'll start immediately in two more minutes, yeah. So just a bit of uh, house rule, if you can unmute yourself throughout the presentation. And at the end of the 20 minutes, we're going to have a question and answer. So at that time, you can just uh, raise your hand, then we're going to unmute you to ask a question. But of course, at the same time also, you can ask, uh, write your question in the chat box, yeah? Okay, guys, I think let's start. Uh, so once again, good afternoon, everyone, to join this uh, webinar. In fact, we've been doing this a couple of times. I still remember the first time when we did, just that we want to meet more audience and so on, a few months back. And at the time, only less than, you know, not many people. And every time we finish one webinar, we have a request to do more because uh, uh, we all share to each other, community learn, we also learning. So I think this is our fifth and sixth webinar already. And why we are continuing doing it, because we get a lot of uh, feedback from you that you want certain of the topic and we try to arrange and try to organize and invite some of the relevant speaker to this particular talk. So again, if you want to listen more to this kind of uh, you know sharing session, please uh, support and give us feedback as well as what talk that you want to listen. As long as it's about rehabilitation, we are more than happy to support. So just a quick one to introduce you myself. My name is uh, Dr. Yong Chi Fai. I'm also an associate professor at University of Technology Malaysia. I'm also actually one of the co-founder and director of Tech Innovation. Uh, yeah, so uh, today is not about me. Today is about Dr. Ko Kang Siang. So I just want to share a little bit about him. Today's topic is about, you know, how tele-rehab technology can speed up recovery for the stroke. We know you may during this uh, MCO, uh, stroke patient cannot go to the rehab center, physiotherapy cannot come up to meet the stroke patient and the, the rehabilitation got delayed. So is there any other way that we can actually uh, continue doing the rehabilitation using the technology? Lah? So I just want to introduce here, Mr. Dr. Ko Kang Siang. I think he's already very familiar with you. He's been with all the webinar. So Dr. Ko, this PhD in UTM under this uh, rehabilitation technology. He has uh, experience for the last, uh, I think, more than five years already. Lah. And I think you know him also. He actually visited almost all the rehab center and hospital in Malaysia. Lah. I mean, not all, but many. Even during his final project, he really visited more than 20 already. So you can see that he is uh, very passionate about this field. And he always want to use the technology to actually help the society or care the society. That's why the company name called Tech Care Innovation. <laughs> so before I invite Dr. Ko to join today's session, right? So I just want to share a little bit of um, how to. So number one, so you don't have to on your video throughout the session. And uh, please mute yourself. And it will be a 30-minute talk. So Dr. Ko will explain very quickly on the Tech Care Innovation Company profile. Then if we dive in into the topic of today, which is to how tele rehab technology can speed up recovery for stroke. Right after he finished, then we have about you know a twenty five minute question and answer, and at the last five minute, we're going to do some conclusion and we're going to give you a link also that you can, uh, put yourself in and give your feedback. And this is very very important to allow us what did you learn for this session, what can we improve, and what they actually works. And that really motivate us to move forward. And very important also, what is the next thought that you want us to deliver? And yeah, finally, very important also, uh, if any question, please write your question on the chat box. I will consolidate it. Then I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Ko during the question and answer. And if you really need to ask Dr. Ko, you can just uh, raise your hand. Then one of the uh, admin going to admit yourself during the question and answer. Then you can ask the question directly. So for now, without waiting uh, further, let's, in, let's welcome Dr. Ko Kang Siang. Dr. Ko, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Dr. Yong. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure to together with all of you today. Um, so uh, I bring up this topic actually, is, I think a lot of people also have question on whether, uh, how really actually tally rehab can uh, help because it's, it's, it's really difficult in a way where we are not able to touch the patient. And, and it's tough, right? So uh, even we ourselves had that concern in our mind before we actually started this. 
uh, why we started this uh, uh, tally rehab actually today i'm going to share uh, some of our case study uh, how we actually started our tally rehab platform and uh, give you some idea and this is kind of like actually a sharing session uh, we hope to learn together each other and we are great to like receive like over 200 of registration from all across malaysia including in the india we have visuals ot we have specialists a doctor as well and patient and family members welcome and i hope this session can uh, contribute to your recovery journey for patient and family member as well as uh, the uh, visuals and ot and doctors uh, hope uh, we can share some ideas together all right uh, i will please allow me to share my screen oh, okay uh, dr young can you see my screen yes i can all right thank you uh, right uh, I'm Carl and I'm rehab robot specialist in tech care innovation. I have my PhD in uh, rehab robot engineering. Actually, Dr. Young is my supervisor in UTM. <laughs> and uh, we have been together for like the past 10 years, uh, focusing on the robotics field, uh, representing Malaysia to other countries as well. So today I have uh, published some research publication, uh, won some innovation award uh, selling our invention to other countries. Uh, the time passed back, I would like to uh, share about my story why we started all this is actually in, in 10 years ago, actually, uh, I was in uh, UTM, we started in a very uh, robotics oriented uh, organization. So this is Robocon where we spent sleepless night to build robots and, and that's how I looked like that time, uh, where we, we build robots in order to complete a task. And, and that year, 10 years ago, we represent Malaysia, we go to Egypt, we won the best design award. But then I realized when I come back, uh, I start to think about how can I fully utilize the skill that we have in, uh, in this field? Is it just about winning the awards? I think it should be more than just an award, right? And, and by just coincidence, like two years later, I managed to go to a stroke center and just realize how difficult it is to recover from stroke and a lot of training needed in order to uh, going through the process by the patient. So uh, that's how it kickstart the idea where how we can use technology to help uh, stroke recovery for patient and to support more therapies to bring more patient to back to their normal life. Okay, uh, 10 years later, we are now a human performance solution company where we provide interactive automated and intelligent training solution we are not only build the solution by ourselves, we also have a brand from other companies from different countries uh, in order to provide as a solution for effective training in stroke rehabilitation at the moment currently, right? So today we have customer from India, Malaysia, UK, Thailand, and even in the China side. So in the past, we won over 30 international and national awards uh, featured in some newspaper. Right, I'm going to go into the topics today, how tally rehab uh, can improve uh, stroke recovery in current situation, right? Um, we know stroke is a leading cause of serious long-term disability. And in average, uh, study by America Stroke Association, Association there are only 10% of stroke patients can actually fully recover uh, and back to their normal life. Like out of 10, we have one fully recovered on that. And others will be maybe have some uh, impairment, a minor impairment or major impairment, depending on their uh, damage on the brain. Right, so, um, and the key to stroke rehab is actually um, neuroplasticity. We know about neuroplasticity. How it recover is the intensity of the training. The higher in the intensity, the faster the recovery. You can look at the right side, Right, the differences of pre and post of rehab, you know, rehabilitation work for stroke rehab. But how much actually intensity we need, actually, uh, study shows that we need a daily consistent of 400 to 600 repetition in order to create effective brain changes. So uh, it's tough. We, in order to do that amount of training, it's not easy, honestly. Well, that is part of the barrier. There are a lot of barriers that limit patients to achieve full recovery uh, from other researchers, they found out like one of the uh, uh, barrier is that limited therapy success. We have patients from we have patients from Kelantan all the way. They mentioned 
very lack of, uh, they are not able to access to many uh, therapies there. For example, financial burden is not cheap. Go to a rehab center, pay uh, each session and all this. And it's a long-term commitment to do a rehab. Limited equipment, uh, mostly we are using basic tools. Uh, caregiver, we also need a lot of caregiver commitments. Traveling as well, every session, caregiver have to bring the patient uh, to the car it takes sometimes takes 30 minutes sometimes it takes one an hour uh, in order to go to a, a, a one hour session and then have to come back so it's like spending like one to two hours in order to get a one hour trainings so it's actually kind of like time consuming and very costly process so how we can actually uh, improve from current uh, uh, status that we are uh, well actually things uh, this is uh, last time pretty pre-pandemic, but now even pandemics, uh, COVID has disrupted the way how we provide training for the patient. Uh, this is the news in the UK, COVID disruption leave thousands of UK stroke survivor disabled. And because of that, many patients, they, they miss up their golden period of time, which is three to six months of time in order to get the uh, most recovery for the trainings. And because of the COVID, uh, since last year, a lot of countries actually uh, started to use internet to provide the services. Globally, 58% of countries are now using telemedicine, uh, according to WHO, to provide an in-person consultation for non-communicated disease. And so this will lead us go into what is tele-rehab. In our context today, tele-rehab is we are more focusing on the rehabilitation context. Uh, tele-rehabilitation is a delivery of uh, rehabilitation services over telecommunication network through the internet. While the advanced stage that we can think is, uh, we can already see is that we can save time where the patient, they don't have to uh, travel all the ways to a uh, 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 rehabilitation facility in order to uh, do the trainings, but they can do it at the comfort of their home. They can save a lot of time, especially in the traveling. Uh, second is probably potentially reducing the cost about traveling also involve costs, etc. And it helps them to access to a uh, better, uh, probably therapies that suitable for them without the geographical constraint. Well, of course, there's some limitation as well. Uh, tele rehab is not fit for everyone. We know that uh, because it really depends on their condition and the technology constraint. Some area, maybe they don't have the facility of the internet, etc. that may not be able to do so. And their family condition, right? We, we can discuss more on the Q&A session, right? So this is the concept of tally rehab, right? Tally rehab will have three parties in general. First is a patient in, uh, with caregiver at home uh, or at a place where they, they want to do a training. Uh, second is the health service provider where is uh, physiotherapies or occupational therapies. We have specialist doctor uh, to plan the trainings program for them and then how they can pass this knowledge and the trainings for the patient is through this technology service provider. In this context, um, uh, it can be uh, as simple as Zoom. Zoom is a technology service provider, one of the conferencing technology. But actually, in order to, to provide a, a, a more uh, comprehensive solution, we will require different kinds of technology service provider. Well, there are some tech, uh, these are some of the tele rehab technology that I would like to share with you. Uh, training. So first is quite common. I believe you know already. It's a video conferencing training where we can use Zoom, we can use Google Meet in order to provide uh, in-person consultation for our patient. Well, secondly, can be other uh, 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 technology. It is like, for example, camera-based trainings. Uh, we have robot-assisted trainings, wearable sensors where they can rec uh, wear on their body, they can record the range of movement, provide, uh, uh, conduct the trainings. Also a uh, virtual relatives program where patient, they, they are uh, simulating their uh, activities inside the virtual world with the sensors and all this. Well, the last one, of course, there is also app-based trainings where uh, they are uh, overseas US and the UK, they already started using apps uh, to provide guidance for the patient. Well, I can say most of the time, uh, entirely rehab technology is not so familiar yet in Malaysia, is, but it's getting popular now. I'm going to share with you. But the question is, does 
tally rehab really works a lot. Uh, we have a lot of questions from uh, 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 therapists as well. Well, uh, these are some of the studies, the latest studies that I'm going to show you with you. Uh, they actually started in the past 20 to 30 years, tally rehab, but now getting more and more popular. So this is one of the paper in 2019, a uh, ran randomized trial of 100 plus uh, stroke survivor found out that actually tally rehab, rehab shows comparable a result to clinic-based rehabilitation for improving motor function. And another systematic review, which is the latest one uh, last year, involving over thousands of patients. They are using tally rehab uh, uh, for the patient and compare with uh, conventional groups inside the clinic base. And I found out actually tally rehab is equally as effective as conventional clinic-based rehab at improving functional outcome after stroke. So I think this is a good news for all of us whereby uh, now we have a new option whereby we not only can provide training for the patient in person physically, but we also can uh, provide these services to our patient through tally uh, technologies. All right. So I'm going to share with you today uh, about Take Care, how Take Care provide the tally rehab services to a uh, patient in Malaysia. Then and <clears throat> today actually it started. That's all because it started uh, the tally rehab is because of the MCO. Uh, we are not, not able to meet the patient, etc. We have started testing since last year MCO. And you can see the graph now, we have close to like over 100 plus uh, accumulated tally rehab session with the patient. And we are getting a lot of good feedback from them. That's why we continue to get more and more patients coming in for the training session, all right? So tally, tally rehab is not only about uh, open the zone and then you tell them what to do and then close their saw. But actually, in order to make it effective, we believe that it really requires a lot of different effort from different parties. Uh, I'm going to share with you, this is tally, Tech Care Tally Rehab Platform. Uh, this is where platform uh, we, we have started to provide this as a service for our patient and therapists, uh, the, including the visual conferencing, appointment scheduling, a reminder for the patient, consultation. We have this personalized exercise guide. And also for therapists who come on board, we also have a pre-assessment for them in order for them to provide training for a patient. Uh, we also provide matchmaking whereby therapists and patients, we will match them uh, uh, to, suitable, to find the therapy suitable for the patient uh, who wanted to do the trainings. Uh, data logging, storage, technical support is not only about uh, physiotherapy now because now it's in tally. We need the uh, technology in order to enable our uh, services. So uh, it will require some technical support as well as uh, there's optional tally training devices. So uh, sometimes we are not able to be there at home for the patient. We can actually use devices to help us to provide assistance for our patient. So now uh, this platform, you can com uh, provide tally technologies, uh, therapist patient matching. And also uh, this is very helpful for patients where we provide personalized exercise guide for patients based on their current progress. And this is what actually uh, we do in the physio center, right? But now how we want to translate this to tally uh, platform is a little bit different approach. All right. Okay, so this here is how it works. It, 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 I will going to bring through how we works is not, uh, the first one is we will have the patient to uh, book the uh, uh, book the session. So whereby uh, they will booking and then they put their condition so that we can know how is their current condition. And after pre-assessment, we will have them a consent form and preparation checklist so that they can, they can know what to expect, what to prepare, uh, make sure the angle, camera, etc. Family members how to prepare themselves. So this is how it looks like when tally training, uh, tally consultation session where we provide with some of our patient. You can see here. So the the important part is not only during this uh, thirty to forty minutes of tally training session. The 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 now we trying to shape whereby uh, the the time when we meet the patient is about providing. Uh, the suitable training for a patient based on their current progress. It's not about training them at that moment of time, right? It's about consulting them what to do, how to do it correctly, and to encourage them to maintain the training every day. 
So the key point actually, not only in the teleconsultation session, it's also a personalized training plan whereby patients have to do every day. So uh, this is what we encourage. We found out that actually patients spend most of, we know that patients spend most of the time at home, but how can we tap into utilizing the their time at home in order to fasten their recovery? Most of the time, we know that patient comes to a physio center, after they do, they go back and they're not able to continue the training at home because they're like, okay, I'm going to wait for the next session of the training. But in stroke rehab, it's not, that is not the case. We know that uh, we really require consistent of training every day in order to see progress. Uh, if you want to see a fast progress. So more importantly is one, we have the tra daily training program. We, we design every unique training for every different type of patient. It's not a standard, it's not a standard training guide. It's a uniquely uh, personalized training based on that current uh, situation. So uh, this is another part, self-training at home patient, very important. But well, before the next session, we will uh, record their progress, uh, monitor whether they are okay or not. And if required, we will do a follow-up uh, through uh, uh, our phones or communication device. So this is how uh, it looks like. It's not that complicated, but uh, it, it, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a way how we can put it into place. Yeah. Right. I'm going to show you some of examples of our therapies with our patient. And uh, these, are, these are one of the examples of our session. It, we, don't, we don't need a, 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 a... So it has to be very dynamic. It's a very dynamic uh, environment where this is our therapist. Uh, it's our trained tele rehab therapist. And I myself is a technical specialist where we will provide the support for technical, if anything. And patient here is where they will be together with the caregiver in order to do the training based on uh, the instruction from the therapist. From here, you can see actually we are running like 30 minutes of session. Uh, our therapist can provide up to 10 to 15 kinds of different exercises. So you see these therapists, they try to check every single exercise they try to follow and then you see whether they are doing correctly. And, and uh, uh, we found out this uh, patient actually uh, very able to focus. They can focus on what kind of training they need. And at the same time, therapists not only do the trainings, but also educate them why do they need to do the trainings. And uh, some patients, they do not know why they do. Some, that's why they, 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 they lost their motivation to do the training sometime. So we think that uh, uh, it's important for us to combine different kinds of uh, uh, approach. And not, because there's a, we're not able to provide physically uh, assistance, that's why we need to have a very special trained therapist that have experience and very creative to adapt different kinds of environment. Uh, well, and yeah, so uh, it's not an easy one because I uh, really, uh, within that period of time, we need to provide different kinds of trainings. So not only in this, I'm going, uh, this I've shown you, this is a, a tally normal training that we can do, but what if uh, we can have devices to help us to fasten the recovery? There is as well, uh, tele rehab with robot assisted training. That's why we currently providing for the patient in Malaysia and helping therapists as well. So this is an example where we adding on the robots, not only the physio trainings, we have these uh, robot trainings for them. And then after they do the robots, we, we teach them how to do it correctly, settings and all this. And then we assess them based on providing uh, and provide the training based on the assessment that day. So this is some more example how we can use the robot because our hand, uh, this is an example of hand training. A lot of time uh, it's hard for us to do uh, uh, assistance for the patient, even manually when we meeting patient, it's very hard for us to continuously give assistance for the finger, each of every finger at the same time. But with robot now, actually we can provide training for the patient while wearing the robot, we can provide full open and closing of the movement uh, with the assistant of robot. When with that, then we combine with our physiotherapy trainings, then we can see a fastest result. Why? Because we, when we have these robot trainings at home, patients can actually do, like we suggesting close to one hour of training every day, which is over thousands of trainings every day. And, and we are seeing results as well. So uh, of course it won't come overnight. Uh, research shows that it takes uh, four to six weeks in order to see progress. And we did actually see that. 
So this is another robot that uh, I'm going to show you how we providing uh, uh, patient at home trainings without uh, physically meeting them. So this is uh, where, let's say if I'm a therapist, I'm looking at the patient. This is uh, where the patient movement. And this is where the patient is using the robot at home while playing the games. This is a CR2 haptic robot where mostly we ship overseas uh, using for wrist and forearm trainings. And uh, studies of uh, six weeks of trainings, we can see actually a progression of their pronation supination as well as their grasping uh, movement on that, right? So th this is a training mode where we combine tele rehab with uh, a robot trainings together. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to share with you whereby we not only limit to ourselves just about uh, uh, conferencing, it's actually there's a way a lot more opportunity where how we can make our tally training more and uh, uh, more useful for our patient. And with the technology advantage, we not only we can provide assistance as well as we can record their performance along the time. Well, this is a, a, a Seattle haptic data and we can see that from first week and this six week, so you do a six-week training and we can see that the orange color is actually a supination training, uh, supination assessment, blue color is the pronation movement. So we can see from here is where uh, at the third weeks already can start to do pronation uh, movement uh, fully. Uh, this is expected while the challenging part is a supination, right? So it takes one more weeks uh, to reach that levels of uh, range of movement. Well, then we, we complete the training and then we stop. And three months later, we do the assessment again. And we can see actually the performance actually uh, still maintaining. So from here, we can actually see not only is a very subjective movement, but with technology support, we only not only can provide assistance, we also can provide data-driven based treatment for our patient, which may, can be more consistent, more accurate for future of our patient. And not only in the hand robot trainings, but also the, uh, this is an example of, let's say, for balancing trainings in tech care, we provide technology that can. Uh, stroke patient, one of the challenging part is their balancing skills. One, they can, uh, even though they can walk sometimes, the balancing is a little bit tough. And so that's why we have this balancing training board uh, where we can configure different, different kind of mode. This is in the mode two where uh, the difficulty level is uh, medium and they will connect to a control box where they can see the visualize the feedback and then they will move according to the target shows in the software. Well, we have patient actually ask, uh, keep, keep telling us, hey, can I drive back? They want to drive back, uh, et cetera. And, and yeah, as a, uh, uh, we also providing a, a car driving simulator for a patient. And, and we see that actually, uh, initially it's very tough. They're not even able to hold the steering. A lot of patients, this is one of most of a patient dreams where they can drive back one day. And, but in order to do drive back one day, uh, we need to train intensively the same idea with neuroplasticity, especially driving is a very challenging task, require different kinds of reaction. So uh, we are not able to train it in an actual car, but what if we can have the technology at home for the patient to do the trainings, the time when they need it. So once they have able to do that, then they can take it back to technologies and then can try with the actual uh, car, of course, with the guidance from the uh, professional. All right, so this is give you an idea where a uh, tally rehab is not about uh, video conferencing, it also can be extended to more technological assisted a therapist now we can use the advantage of technology to help us to provide trainings not only the time when they meet us but the time when they have the technology they can use use it almost every day so we are now moving into uh, we know assessment is very tough uh, especially when we we are not meeting the patient so actually using technology is actually uh, uh, quite powerful so this is some of the project that we are ongoing where we use camera technology in order to assess the range of movement of the patient. And for example, the left side, we can access the range of movement of the fingers. The right side, we can access the range of movement of the shoulder, et cetera. And this, we can foresee that the future where uh, uh, therapists provide the trainings and the system can collect the performance based on the video recorders. And that's something that we're looking into then uh, we can provide a more accurate uh, training suitable for the patient. 
And these are some of the feedback from patients after the trainings. Uh, they mentioned that training session is, uh, and the guide is very useful. Uh, tele session is good and super useful. This is some of the uh, family members and they are very happy with the progress. Uh, remember, this is we did not meet them at all. It's through tally trainings, and they can actually see progress. This left side patient actually is already three years not seeing progress on their hand. The hand initially when we meet, when we meet the patient is like in a very spastic position. But the, we only use like one and a half month. Then we can do uh, we with the support of the robots and the guidance from our therapist the hand actually is already able to open in, in resting position. And we can see that they are very happy with the progress. So what we can see here is actually not only physically we can help our patient, but also tallyly we can help them as well. It's marvelous to have this tally support, especially during this pandemic, these are the patient as well. Uh, right. So tech care is not only a, a limit here. Our plan is the next 10 years, we wanted to provide a full 100% of full trainings devices to empower patient and therapists to have a fastest recovery uh, with technology support. And that is our goal to help uh, all of the patient globally. And why tally rehab technology? So from here, uh, we can see that uh, uh, we can save the time of the patient, let's say, uh, sometimes if we have a lot of patient, let's say if you have a lot of patient lining up appointment, uh, especially during hospitals, we have a lot of patients there. But with tele rehab, we can a patient don't need to travel all the way. They can save the time of traveling, uh, appointment, uh, waiting time. But then they can directly assess the patient the time when they need it. Safe cost, uh, in the sense where when we have patient uh, uh, reducing the traveling uh, uh, traveling effort, then we can save the traveling cost. Not only that, but also the long term cost whereby we can. Uh, using tally, we can ensure not only after they coming out from the hospitals, uh, then they stop the training, but after they come out from the hospitals, uh, uh, they go back to their home, we are still maintaining the trainings of the progress so that they can recover faster to reduce the long-term cost for them. And of course, with this, uh, we, uh, without, limit, without the physical barrier between therapists and the patient, we can actually increase the intensities of the trainings with the support of the technologies. And we can see that it, because of the increasing of the training intensity, for sure, we can see a faster result uh, of the patient. And of course, it's not a uh, uh, fit for every patient. It really depends on, uh, so before every patient coming in, we will have the therapist to assess whether they are suitable for the device, uh, for the uh, daily rehab approach. Yeah. So, uh, so why daily rehab here again is of course, uh, without physiotherapy trainings, the patient, uh, of course, will still improve a little bit, but after that, will be stagnant. And this is where we're coming from uh, with physiotherapy trainings, where we can have a higher recovery, especially during the golden period. But still, yet we have only uh, we have ninety percent of patients not able to fully recover because stroke is really uh, uh, very require intensive trainings. In average, there are research found that in average. Uh, there are 40 to 60 repetitions that we can do in our physical training for upper limb trainings. There's a lot of patients, uh, especially the hand is the most challenging part because it needs the most trainings along the, tra uh, along the uh, recovery journey. So what we are looking into is how we can actually have the tally rehab technology in order to fasten the curve uh, for the patient, uh, helping the therapist to help the patient. So we can foresee that the trend now we can use the tally rehab technology together with in-house, of course, uh, for patients who are very severely, especially in the three to six months, we still really need a very intensive physical rehabilitation trainings. But after that, we can continue with combine of tally rehab technology in order to uh, help the patient to maintain the training qualities intensity, uh, even though they are at home as well. All right, uh, a lot of a lot of people ask me about this question, how is the price in the last session? So I put it in the slide here. Uh, currently, hand robots, uh, we have a limited offer package where uh, one is only 3,899 ringgit per set. And uh, now we also have a new upgrade where we can do a leg, even leg massage for patients, very useful for patients with 
uh, edema, not able to walk, then it can help a lot on that. And you just have you just have to need to add. Uh, you will get a free, yeah. You will get a free if, if you order before 15 of August this month, and that is the promotion for our audience today. Uh, yeah. So um, and if you are a patient or family member, you are not able to access to the uh, uh, training set you need. We actually can. Uh, help you on that. So if you want to do that, you just scan the barcode or you can call us in order to, for us to understand your current condition, then we can arrange a training for you. Well, at the same time, actually we see that the demand is increasing and we are looking actually for more therapies to be working together with us. And uh, of course, um, uh, we're looking for experienced therapists who are interested to do part-time where you can provide uh, trainings for a uh, uh, patient through Tally. And of course, um, uh, with the support from tech care technical team and uh, training as well. So uh, yeah, we have uh, a few senior physios in house currently, uh, eight to nine years of uh, experiences. And we hope to look for more visuals coming, joining us and especially for the OT uh, uh, specialist. So yeah, uh, that's all from me today. And uh, I will have the Q&A session, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Kang Xiang. Maybe if you can unshare the screen so they can see you. So that would be that is a very comprehensive talk and also is something very new in the market. And uh, it's good to hear that things are moving. And 150 sessions for the last how many months? Six months plus. Yeah. So I think in the short time, uh, we have this so we can see uh this daily rehab actually have some benefit. Uh. Uh, just a bit of a disclaimer before we start. Uh, myself and Dr. Call, although we write doctor here, we are not doctor in medical. We are actually doctor in PhD in uh, rehabilitation technology. So we will answer in terms of technology, uh, but also at the same time, we have some experience in the rehab uh, rehabilitation exercise because normally we are with them. Uh, so we yeah. also can give a bit of uh, advice on that. But of course, if there's a little bit more technical question about rehab, then the best person to ask is the physiotherapist and the OT uh, yourself. Uh. Okay, so uh, I'll just move on to some question. Uh, Kong Kang said. I mean, looking today's session, uh, there are a lot of physiotherapists actually joining. Uh, so, of course, uh, the tech, uh, tech care innovation at this platform. But let's say the physio themselves, one, they, are, one, they want to do their own tele rehab using Zoom or whatever. Is that okay? Is that fine? So, what's yeah. your advice for them? Uh, definitely, yes. Um, uh, it's, it's not complicated to start. Uh, you, you can use the Zoom and to start. My, my suggestion to start, uh, of course, uh, use a uh, readily available, uh, uh, stable uh, system that you can en ensure the reliability. And uh, always good to start with small. So uh, there's no exact formula, um, uh, but the, there's, uh, there's some of the rules where uh, we need to have give the concern for the patient. So patient before patient on board with the tally trainings, they need to have signed the concern form. Uh, for a therapist to provide the service for them. So this is one of the uh, requirements for tele rehab uh, policies uh, 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 globally. Yeah. So that is one of it. And, and then uh, my tips is, um, this is some of feedback from uh, our physios as well. Uh, they mentioned about tele rehab also is, it seems like very easy, like looking into uh, providing the trainings just by looking at the patient there. But they, 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 they mentioned that uh, the, to, in order to provide effective training for the patient, it re really requires uh, uh, creativity, dynamics, and adaptability. So we need to adapt the patient uh, uh, performance during that period of a short period of time in order to make sure they get the trainings that require uh, from the therapy. So yeah, uh, to do that, uh, really takes experience to, to have that. Uh, yeah, but uh, practice make perfect. So in uh, our first few sessions also, we, it takes time for us to, sometimes the, the, the patient, they say, hey, sorry, wait, wait, <laughs> we are not ready. They can they are like not ready on the table, et cetera. So we, 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 my suggestion is how we can optimize, make sure the time is sharp. So before that, we actually start to collecting the current progress of the patient by getting their videos, uh, understanding a patient will look at their videos. Okay, how is their current progress? What is their current uh, training uh, plan? So before actually started the training, the therapist actually have the training plan already in, uh, in with her. So uh, when the time went go, then they do a quick assessment of five minutes. And then after that, we start the trainings. Whenever start the trainings, of course, depends on that particular patient. Sometimes may not be expected that uh, on the movement that we want them to do. But the, 
the trainings. Uh, so the therapists at that time have to adapt uh, based on the patient uh, uh, requirement. Yeah. Yeah, thank Kang Sam for that. So I think in general, physiotherapists or OT, I know that you are you want to go on to help the stroke patient. I mean, we have the same feeling. And the stroke patient also, I mean, they stay at home, they cannot go out. I mean, the family member actually want to send them but scared because of, you know, COVID now, the number is increasing. And then daily rehab is the way to go. But again, maybe I'll ask Kang Sam this question also. Why you go and do daily rehab? Because that care initially, we don't do tele rehab. You know, we actually focus on technology. But yeah. you know why we do this? Like maybe you want to share your personal story. Why this happening? Yeah. Um. Thank you, Dr. Deong. Actually, I I don't even think about tele rehab, and I don't believe last time, uh, because are you sure tele rehab is just impossible? But it just happened that uh last year my father had a stroke, and and it really struck me off because I'm based in Johor and my father is in Penang. And at that time, it just happened uh, MCO. So I have no ways to come back to home in order to help my father. So what I do is I, I quickly do a, a tally trainings. Like, okay, every day we're going to start this zone trainings and, and we start the trainings. And because of that, then I start to see, oh yeah, actually patient they can do and they are seeing progress. So that's where I started the 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 the. the, the the idea where I think tally rehab potentially not only can help like me ourself, but also can help many patients who have the same situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Kang thanks for the sharing. I mean, a baby person, I mean, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad at the show and then you have to do this. But I mean, yourself as a son to get your dad to do training, I think it's even more difficult because you are the son and your dad. But when you do the training for, you know, a stroke patient, is it more easier? Uh, how, how do you find the difficulty in uh, give a training? Sorry, sorry, the young. You mean? I mean, like because your dad, then you ask your dad to do certain things. Sometimes it's a bit challenging because uh, it's your dad and so on. But when you give a training to a stranger, for example, is it easier? Very mm-hmm. easy. Okay. Actually, is uh, uh, it's also very depending, sir. Um, uh, so one of the one of the requirement we see that tally we have actually uh. We really need patient involvement, motivation. They have the motivation to help them. I'm glad that my father had the motivation. So he actually waiting for me <laughs> every day. Like, okay, uh, then he's like, okay, can you like accompany? Because they, they, they want to have someone to accompany them. Uh, or some patient, yes, they, 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 it's easier sometimes because uh, they will listen to what we say and they do it. Right. So yeah, there's some cases like that as well. Yeah, thank you. I think like you say, inclusion criteria is very important. The tele rehab is not for everyone. It's only for those that are able to understand, motivate, and so they will be benefited from this tele rehab. I'll ask some of the quick questions from chat box. This is from Mazli Ismaya. Which is more suitable, PC or laptop? <laughs> uh, PC or laptop? Uh, I would suggest definitely is a lap, uh, uh, laptop. Uh, laptop will be easier because uh, sometimes we, may, we will need to move uh, the, uh, probably I'll mention about patient, uh, family members, uh, laptop will be good. And, and uh, it's good to back out with your phone as well. Uh, because sometimes patient, we want them to look at the movement. We will need to shift the camera. Then we will need to look at. So laptop, I think is still okay in this sense. Uh, portables, uh, easy to set up. Yeah. And then bigger screen for them, easier for them to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you for the answer. I think basically is uh is as long as your laptop fast enough, mobile, I think it's fine. I think even you can use phone or even tab, like, I mean, if you can see the instruction well, like, as long yeah. as you're able to see the instruction, I think it's not an issue. Okay, next question from Irene Chu. I said that hello, I'm Irene, an occupational therapist. May I know do you do functional training after the patient show improvement in motor recovery? Yes, definitely. So uh uh this is where uh, our senior physio they know. Uh, when the time when I look at the patient, I was like, oh, this patient seems like not able to do this. And the, when, the, when our therapist coming in, uh, I, just, I just presume. Uh, but when our therapist is coming, oh, you can do the functional already. And I was like, are you sure? Then they, they give the trainings. Then, for example, cutting the papers. And I was surprised. And patient able to do that. Even patient themselves is surprised. That they can't believe they can do that. Then, of course, there are some techniques. Sometimes, for example, they are, they are putting so like cuttings. Sometimes the they, they muscle will be stiff when in the middles 
and then our physio will like, okay, you take down slowly. I will help you to how to reduce your stiffness. Then they will do the stretching, etc., and continue the trainings. So we, we can see that, uh, yes, the answer is we do give a functional training after patients show improvement. Yeah, yeah I think that also a uh, satisfaction, right, Kang I mean, all the physio, whenever you see your stroke patient actually recover, that is a satisfaction. And to be honest, this is also our satisfaction when we yeah. see them start to move. Right? And ultimately, we want to help the community. Yes. Thanks. And I think Dr. Ko just now did mention that actually in tech innovation, we have physiotherapists. We are looking for OT actually for <laughs> collaboration. So, yeah. I mean, if you are more than happy to work, just contact call, then we can explore some of the uh, collaboration. I mean, need someone expert from OT. We have next question from, uh, hi, I'm OT from Hospital Rehabilitation to Russ. Thank you for the great sharing. I just want to know from your SP run the tele rehab, is there any fall or safety issue occur on the PT and how if it is happened? Okay. Uh, so far, uh, currently we don't have these cases falling. We do have patients falling uh, by themselves at home. Uh, so the first session when we meet, we thought is she, or, uh, she already can do. And then the next training, we want to do more training. But when we meet her in the next training, he say, she say, I have a fall three days ago, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and actually, actually quite good is whereby they in time meet our physio. So our, our, our therapist know that, okay, you have a fall, no worry. I will teach you how to uh, train that uh, or to recover. So uh, in all, the question is where any fall safety issue? Yes, definitely. We take it very seriously. In fact, uh, we, have pay, we have physios asking the patient to, to sit on the floor without assistance, at, which is the video that I show you just now, for example, but uh, uh, with the support, but yes, we are able to do it safely. So this uh, also not only the patient caregiver support at the site, also, also really highly dependent on uh, therapies, your uh, observations and your experience, how you can manage the risk between the patient at that environment based on their current performance. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Kansai. I think that is very important also uh, to manage the risk. La. So this mm -hmm. is where the inclusion criteria coming in very important. If the, yeah. if the patient can do it themselves, I think the physio will make a decision, okay, you can do it themselves. But let's say there are certain physio that certain patient that need support, they must to have a caregiver at the site to ensure safety is enhanced. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is also we need to inform to the patient firsthand that any concern of this, they also understand the risk of this that we have. So both party, everyone is aware of this. Okay, yeah. thank you, Fatima, for the question. So next, we have a question from your guest, Wari. Thank you for wonderful sharing. It was great. When it comes to stroke patient, balance is one of the concerns. How do you overcome and address the safety aspect in terms of fall? Yeah, okay, yeah. It's yeah. a similar, similar answer. Maybe you want to quickly answer this? Uh, uh, it's the same. So uh, what I'm trying to bring up here is also very important is the caregiver. So we are not only training the patient. Or during the training session, we will ask the caregiver to come in and we will explain to them why we need to do and how to prevent, uh, for example. So at the same time, we are educating the caregiver. When we do the balancing training, uh, first we will ask the patient. Uh, uh, of course, uh, therapists will see, uh, do some assessment, and then only we do the, uh, provide the training that's suitable for them. First is the safety holding and all this, balancing trainings. Second is the caregiver at the site to make sure uh, 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 it's safe if anything happens. At the same time also, we need to make sure the surrounding of the environment is safe. They have something to support, yeah. So uh, at home environment, we will tend to be more uh, careful, more careful than, yeah, yeah. So that is, that is how uh, we want to. Uh, yeah, good point, Kang Siang. I think maybe we can even suggest, um, well, they must, if possible, they have a caregiver. If they don't have a caregiver, then we have to, maybe we have to can give them a guideline on how to ensure the place they do is actually very safe. For example, the, the chair is not near and so on and so forth, or even put a rubber down there. Thanks for yeah. the answer. The next one is, uh, I'm Azro here. How to, oh, sorry, before that. Oh, how often do you, from Ms. Ba, how often do you do the tele rehab training for each patient? Specific regime, can you suggest it? Thank you. Uh, so how often we do the trainings? Actually, we have tested several, uh, we have tested every day, we have tested every week, we have tested every two weeks. Uh, and we even have a tested every one month, this once. And then we found out that there's something quite interesting is every day, of course, if we have the resources for every patient every day, it will be great. But, but we, because we want to maintain the quality of the trainings for every patient, 
because we need to provide personalized training. So we uh, kind of like every day sometimes is a little bit a uh, uh, burden for a lot of patients in order to do that. So uh, we started to do uh, every two weeks. So two up, uh, every two weeks we do the trainings and we can see actually it's quite good for the patient. Uh, so I can say it really depends. Uh, we did do every one week and every two weeks. So depending on the patient, if the patient is not able to progress, so the idea of the tally session is to change the training plan and then so that they can progress to the next level. So if the time when we meet the patient, the patient is maintaining the progressing level, either they are not doing it, either they are not doing it or they, the, the exercise is not suitable for them. That's why they are not progressing. Um, so uh, when we see the patient able to progress every one week, then we will maintain every week trainings. So before, in order to decide whether one week or two weeks or suitable duration, uh, we will ask the patient, uh, family member, hey, how is the progress? Uh, uh, after one week, if okay, they seems progressing, then we will kickstart with a one week training routine for this patient. But some patients, they have especially very difficult condition whereby they have cognitive impairments and uh, quite a long time, three to four years, uh, it takes time uh, to, to see progress. And in this sense, uh, we have that patient like it takes two to three weeks once for uh, that kind of for, for patient. So I would say it really depends from one to two to three weeks, uh, depending on the type of the patient. But two weeks is a moderate uh, training duration. Okay, Tang, I need to cut short session. you. We are yeah. running out of time. But yeah. I think we can do a clinical study on this, uh, Kang Siang. Maybe we work with some of the rehab center or study. That, that's going to be a very interesting study. Uh. Okay, yeah. next question. Uh, hi, Azro here, uh, physiotherapist. How to overcome the initial assumption while tele rehab palpation? As for the treatment, shouldn't be a problem since we might process with a plan of treatment for patient to follow. Please enlighten for the initial assessment. A this in initial assessment. Uh, so how patient? I think uh, honestly, uh, we still need to do physical training. Uh, it is unavoidable, but we can reduce the intensity with the tele rehab training. So if we require a uh, manual techniques. Uh, for the patient, we may need them to visit us, uh, to visit the physios to do the uh, uh, assessment or the treatments. But to do an initial assessment, uh, what we do actually, we are using a functional, more on a functional outcome measures, uh, not the full one, because they don't have the time to go through all, but we're only focusing on uh, training uh, the functional tasks that they can do at that moment of time based on our observation. So we use that as the outcome measures. Uh, Treatment should not be a problem since we might progress with the plan for the follow -up. please. Okay. So initial assessment, sometimes we will spend more time for the in initial assessment. Yeah, to do, uh, we ask them to send us walking videos, uh, lifting hand videos, taking, doing something videos, and then they will send us. We, we analyze, and then by the first session, it will take a longer time to do the assessment with the support of the caregiver. In fact, we do have recording in-house videos uh, for them to follow and then we, they can try to do and we can observe. Thank you, Kansan, for that. I think the general question, the other answer would be the Indian assessment still need to be physical so that they can really assess. Then after that, the telehealth is actually a tool to help the patient to continue more. La. That yes. will be direct to my next question. Uh. Before that, I just want to inform that the link for the registration feedback and also the e-certificate is in the chat box. So you can fill it up. We appreciate your feedback and also, uh, you know, the feedback, what you want to listen more in the future. Lah. So, Kang my next thought is about this uh, tele-rehab. We know that now it's very useful because physio cannot go to the rehab center, patient cannot go out and whatnot, right? But let's say MCO finish. Mm -hmm. Is tele-rehab still relevant and makes sense? Well, it's, it's still relevant, Dr. Yong. <laughs> I'm seeing and I, I really like seeing patient tally rehab because the way, in, in fact, my father is a stroke patient, you know, and we go for every three, three times a week, every, every, every week. And, and uh, after, after like uh, close to years, we see that, okay, sometime uh, we may need to change the way how we do. Actually, at the same time, we do the tally rehab. The, the, the things I like about tally rehab is, uh, I no need to, to have extra effort, but getting the same quality of the training suggestion from the physiotherapist that probably may be as far as from Johor in Penang. So, uh, or maybe like, for example, 
hospital rehab terrace. I have one someone guiding me, but I am in Penang. In, so, so I really like uh, uh, with Tally rehab. If there is uh, like from all the way from there, then I'll be definitely very happy to in order to get the access. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Ko, I think you bring a very important point. Yeah. So can you share a little bit every time you send your dad to the hospital, right? From the house, go to the hospital. How, what is the journey? How long is the journey? Uh, it's, it's, uh, we, are, we, are staying in, we are staying in a town. It takes about one hour for us to travel from our home. And then we go to, uh, we have to go through the bridge. And then we go to the hospital. And then we have to wait for the appointment. We have to see the doctor. Doctor, it takes like, sometimes it takes three, four hours. Sometimes it takes seven, eight hours. Uh, uh, really depends because there are a lot of patients there. So it really spent, and it takes two of us to bring our pay, uh, or that there, for example. So it spent two, two of our time as well. Understand. Then I think looking into the benefit of tele rehab, but not only from now, but in the future also, they help in one time. For example, let's say you send your dad go to the hospital, you spend one hour traveling, one hour back is two hours, not consider other waiting time. Now. So one week is already how many hours, right? But yeah. if you use a tele rehab, uh, you just be there. You don't have to change your shirt. Then you can indeed spend the time on the rehab itself. Then the mm -hmm. other one is, let's say you need someone to send your dad. Basically, you need one caregiver. You need to travel. And this is on the cost. So in fact, you also save this cost. It becomes more effective and efficient. I, that is totally makes sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. Um, I think we are at the end of the session. So I just want to give a quick conclusion that uh, today we are talking about the tele rehab technology. Uh, whether it speed up the rehab. So basically, the technology itself is not directly speed up. It's actually helping. It's a tool to allow mm -hmm. the physiotherapy engage more with the physio uh, with the patient. And yes. at the same time also, because uh, uh, when you lose daily rehab, you are missing the physical touch. This mm -hmm. is where you can use a robot, the hand robot, the CR2, the feeble, all kind of robot, or even machine vision. So this is where Take are doing. And we can see a lot of a good results I mean, when I think when we first started only like one or two, then now we are doing like more than 150. So that show the improvement of the, you know, the, the, the tele rehab is actually uh, working. Uh. So maybe Dr. Ko, maybe can you give a quick one? Let's say they are interested. I mean, for tele, tele for physiotherapists, if they want to do this tele rehab, if they want to buy, they don't necessarily to use a tech care tele rehab platform and they can just buy the robot and they can use it. Maybe you can explain that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, so uh, we, we have experience in treating patients. So let's say if therapy is interested to use a robot for their patient, you can buy the robot uh, uh, from us and then you can bring it for your patient. Then we will do the training for you, uh, some of the trainings. Then, yeah, then uh, if you wanted to use our facilities, then you can uh, let us know and then we can do. But if you prefer to go with your own methodology, no problem at all, then uh, yes, there's an option, yeah. So we are, I mean, taking innovation as like a technology provider. In yeah. fact, uh, CR2, the ham robot, now we have the leg one. I think the leg one you have not really introduced to the market yet, right, Kang Siang? No, yet, not yet. Are we going to uh, have a webinar for that? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just, uh, we're going to release today. It just restarted today, yeah. I see, I see. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very thankful for you all to stay with us for the last one hour. And like I mentioned, we have a link for you to fill up. So that will be a registration. You're going to get your e-certificate and we're going to appreciate your feedback. Uh, do, how are we doing? If I could, what should we maintain? And those that we need to improve, we welcome feedback. And of course, what talk that you want us to give uh, and other times. Uh. So once again, thank you very much to all. And also thank you, Dr. Call, for the wonderful session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day and stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Very important. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.